Welcome to our 16th battle report for the Abyssal Realms for Deep Wars and Shadow Sea. We are in for a real treat this time as we've got the largest video battle report, at least to my knowledge, of the Abyssal Realms anywhere to be seen. So buckle up, this is going to be a fun one. It's so big, so monstrous, we had to cut it into parts for your viewing enjoyment. So let's get started with part 1 of 3 for the battle for the portals on the Skeletal Coast. On the Skeletal Coast, the Dark Mariners continue their quest for power by claiming ancient objects of power. They have discovered the location of the ethereal portals of Delithnia, the ancient and terrible stable gateway to the ethereal realm. With this portal under their control, they could summon unlimited minions of the Dark Powers and turn the tide of the control of the Shadow Sea to the Dark Mariners for centuries to come. The fortune hunters, wanting to lay claim to the portals for their own, either through scientific curiosity or the promise of ethereal riches beyond the dreams of avarice, have staked their claim to these artifacts as well. While no good can come of the mortal meddling with the ethereal realms, it is far preferable than allowing the Dark Mariners undisputed control. In this battle, we see two major forces of fortune hunters and Dark Mariners battle to occupy these two ethereal portals of Delithnia. One portal is on the sandy beaches of the Shadow Sea. One is in the shallows of the sea leading up to the beach. These portals are two-way and are said to draw in mortals to the ethereal realms, as well as produce both riches and terrors beyond imagining. Ancient control objects are both on land and sea, which the Elder Race used to fine-tune their control to access the ethereal realm. Now they lay dormant for centuries on the beach and in the tides time having caused their function to be less stable and predictable than in those ancient times. By laying claim to these portals, who will end up controlling the fate of the Shadow Sea? Alright folks, this is the battle for the portals on the Skeletal Coast. This is a two- Games at once, Deep Wars, Shadow Sea Battle. We've got 800 points on each side. So we've got the Skeletal Coast, which is the Shadow Sea area. It's a three by three board that I put together. Uh, so it's kind of intended to look like a beach. Um, it's a little bit of a beachhead that uh, the Dark Mariners and the Fortune Hunters will be battling over. And we've got the Shadow Sea over, or sorry, excuse me. We've got the Deep Wars uh, area here. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a ramp down to the seafloor. We're calling this the seafloor. There's a medium stick between the seafloor and the edge of the, the beach. And so you can swim up one level if you want to move up one level, and then you can just move straight horizontal up onto the beach. But the idea here is that we've got two 800 point forces for both the Shadow Sea and the Deep Wars area for both Fortune Hunters and Dark Mariners. So this is a 1600 point battle. So the way we're going to do this is we've broken up into two separate armies, one for Shadow Sea, one for Deep Wars. The Shadow Sea forces will deploy on the Shadow Sea map. The Deep Wars forces will deploy on the Deep Wars map. We will dice for side. The idea is, uh, or sorry, we will dice for attacker defender. The idea of this game is it's a custom scenario. So we're calling it the battle for the portals on the skeletal coast. There's two portals on each end of the board. Those portals will summon a gigantic creature of some form. The way this works is on each side of the board, there's two artifacts on each board that will be placed after we deploy. Those artifacts get activated by a scientist. They are complexity level three. So the way this works is you activate an artifact. If you get three successes with your scientist trying to activate that, one of these two portals will activate and it's random. So we'll dice off. If I'm on this board and I roll one through three, that means I activate my side portal. If I roll four through six, that means I activate the opposite portal. On the first turn, either a deep star kraken will come out of that portal or a giant lizard will come out of that portal. And each time it gets activated, two treasures will get spit out. Also, each time it gets activated, on the first turn it gets activated, it's this swirling vortex. It pulls things in. So on the first turn after it's activated, every model within three long sticks of that portal will get moved back one medium stick. If things get sucked into the portal, they are lost in the game. On the second turn after it's activated, 
it's got a range of two, sorry, it's got a range of three medium sticks and it drags things back one short stick. On the third turn, after it's still activated, it does no dragging of models. But on the initial activation, two treasures come out on base to base contact with the portal. It drags things in for a short while, that pulse of pulling something in, and then that stops. If someone else flips the switch successfully, you roll again. D6, low is your side, high is the other side. If the portal is on, it gets turned off. If the portal is off, it gets turned on. So it's just like a switch. Every time you hit an activation, three activations, to successfully turn it on or off, you roll randomly which portal, and then it either turns on or turns off. The giant creature only happens on the first time that portal gets activated. So the first time this thing gets activated, Mr. Deep Star Kraken comes out of there and starts wreaking havoc. The first time this one gets activated, the large lizard comes out and starts wreaking havoc. After that, no, no creatures come out. Victory points. There's also six treasures that have been placed. Each treasure gets a D6 roll. On one, it's worthless junk. Two through five, it is gold. On a six, it is an ether crystal worth two. So gold is worth one. Ether crystals worth two. There's no artifacts in this game. Um, once treasure is picked up, you do not need to carry it around. It becomes just part of the victory points of the game. Um, at the end of the game, if you have opened a portal and it stays open, doesn't matter how many times you open it, but if it's open by the end, end of the 10th turn, you get six victory points. So it behooves you to try to keep those portals open by controlling the, the artifacts. So that's the game. We're gonna come back with a roll for attacker defender and then we will deploy, place the control points and then we'll get started. Additionally for the scenario on the water side that we've got um, clear visibility. So two long sticks worth of visibility uh, on the deep wars portion of the board. Okay, here is the Shadow Sea Fortune Hunters forces, 800 points. John, walk us through your list selection here. Okay, we've got two Iron Conqueror mechs. We've got a Pirate Rogue. We've got Seton the Mariner. Uh -huh. We have a Mad Bomber. Yep. We have Captain Drake. We have a Templar Witch Hunter. We have Nereus Neptune. Nereus Neptune. Yep. And we have two pirate adventurers. Gotcha. And you, we had to do a couple of proxies here just to make sure that we understand that the two on the back left and the the one on the back right are the pirate adventurers. Is that correct? Uh, the two on the back left are pirate adventurers. The one on the back right is a pirate rogue. Pirate rogue. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. So everything else should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, give us some idea, like, why did you pick these forces? Uh, because that's all of the Shadow Sea models that I have painted. <laughs> Fantastic. We're working on our Fortune Hunters Shadow Sea. So let's move over to the Shadow Sea, um, or sorry, let's move over to the Deep Wars Fortune Hunters list next. All right, John, this is your 800 points worth of Deep Wars Fortune Hunters. Walk us through your list here. We've got a, a couple of Breacher mechs. We've got uh, two Sea Dog Corsairs. We've got a, a Templar Sentinel of Light. We've got a, a Templar Shadow Slayer. Uh, we've got Marie du Chatelet, the scientist. Mm -hmm. And then we're leading the force with Grace Flynn in her dive suit. Grace Flynn making her Deep Wars debut here on the channel. Okay, so walk us through a little bit your forces selection here. Uh, there was just a few models I wanted to get on the table that I haven't used before like the, that, that I think are really good. Like the um, like the Sea Dog Corsairs. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wanted to see what Grace Flynn can do. Yep. Um, and uh, we only used the Sentinel of Light once previously, and that was in the report with the submarines. Yeah. So I kind of want to see what he can do in a regular battle. Right, right on. Okay, that looks like a fun little force. And so let's move on to the Dark Mariners next. Okay, this is my 800 points of Shadow Sea Dark Mariners. So it's led, quote unquote, led by Lithiana. She's not a leader, but she is an Ethermancer. It's actually, I suppose, led by the. Um, the uh, Vanguard uh, uh, Commander. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of biomechs here. We've got a Destroyer biomech, a Leviathan biomech, and a Annihilator biomech. Um, they're gonna stick close to the Ethermancer and hopefully get some activation bonuses there. Uh, we've got a Cephalid Scientist on this side. We've got a, a Telepath as well. And uh, that rounds out the 800 points uh, for my 800 points of Shadow Sea Dark Mariners. On the Dark Mariners 
Deep War side, we've got the force led by Melendil Runeseer. He's accompanied by an Ethermancer. He's also um, supported by a, a Raider Taskmaster, so that cracking the whip should hopefully uh, give some activation bonuses there. Uh, they're flanked by a couple of uh, Vanguard Warriors. Um, we're proxying this, um, I believe this is an Animus model, but that is a Scientist as well. I only have one um, Scientist model, so we had to proxy this, this one proxy here. Uh, we've also got a um, Raider Cavern Crawler, and we've got a Hunter Killer Biomech there. Uh, Melon Deal's got a control rod, so hopefully we'll get some activation bonuses there. So that rounds out 800 points worth of Dark Mariners on the Deep Wars side. Okay, so we've got, this is a two versus two player match. We've got 800 points each side, Dark Mariners and Fortune Hunters. So Craig and John are going to be on the Fortune Hunter side. Our friend Doug and I will be on the um, Dark Mariner side. And now we're going to roll for Attacker Defender. So Doug is going to roll for Team Dark Mariners and Craig is going to roll for Team Fortune Hunters. Okay, let's see what we get. Doug is a three, Craig is a one. So that means that we are the Attacker, Doug, which means that we set up first and we go first set up second set up second and go first it's been a while folks yeah. so we're going to set up second and then go first so we're going to have the fortune hunter set up we're setting up deploying on the long the long table edges hopefully that makes sense so we'll come back after we've done deployment okay so while we're deploying we're almost done deploying but we wanted to go over a couple of house rules and make sure that people kind of follow along with what we're doing here so when we roll activations or when we roll um, you know, when, when one turn goes and then the next, each side gets one free flubbed activation per turn. So the way this is going to work is, let's say we're attackers and they're defenders, which is actually the case, the Dark Mariners will go. I will move all of my army, I'll do all of my activations, Doug will then do all of his, and then we would concede the turn over to the Fortune Hunters. John or Craig would do theirs, and then the other guy would do theirs. We'll do one army at a time. But each side gets one free flubbed activation. So like if I'm activating on threes, I roll a one, one, and a three. I get my one action. But since we're using so many models, we didn't want to overly penalize a flubbed activation. So we get to choose if, you know, we can choose to keep that flub and then concede the turn to the other side. Or we can say, okay, let's use that one free flubbed activation, try to get the rest of the team going and then we hand over the turn to the next one. So that's one of the house rules. The other house rule is that whatever summoned creatures, the Deep Star Kraken or the lizard that gets summoned over there, um, will not be affected by the pulse of being pulled back into the portal. So remember the portals when they, when they get activated, three long sticks range, one medium stick. That happens immediately once it gets activated. Then on the next turn, at the top of the turn, if it's turn two, it's three medium sticks range, which gets pulled back one stick. Then after that, there's no more pulling back into the portal until it gets activated again. So those are the house rules and we're gonna finish deployment and we'll come right back. Okay, we have placed our, uh, we've deployed our forces. We're not gonna go into too much detail there. Fortune Hunters on the Shadow Sea side, Fortune Hunters on the Deep War side, Dark Mariners on the Deep War side and Dark Mariners on the Shadow Sea side. So I've placed my portal, or sorry, my um, my artifact to activate the portal right there. Craig, looks like you've placed yours there. John, you've placed yours inside that little uh, rocky formation. And Doug, you've placed yours there. So we actually, actually just came up with uh, one more house rule. Uh, if the portal activates and you are in a terrain feature or next to a terrain feature and you get pulled in, terrain will stop you. However, you do if you do get stopped by a terrain, piece uh, you need to do a strength check or potentially take one wound so um, that we didn't want people swimming or flying through the air and flying right through the terrain but we did want there to be some sort of impact no pun intended uh, to the outcomes of the game so I think uh, gentlemen do we have anything else that we need to cover I think that's it right we're good okay I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with the Dark Mariners turn one All right, top of turn one, we're gonna start with the Dark Mariners on the Deep War side. Doug, what are you doing? I'm gonna go ahead and just generate spell points with my Ether Mancer okay. and activate him. Activating on two, since you're within a long stick of your leader. Here we go. Uh, did you roll three dice? Yes. Reroll that guy. So three, three spell points. 
So we'll just put a little dice next to him to remember that we've got three spell points on him. All right, who's next? Uh, next up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate that guy. Or do you want to do the Taskmaster? Or oh, he's not within a medium. Uh, oh, I long see. stick. Well, long I stick. Taskmaster. 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 You're right. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. So no, he's going to. I'm just going to activate. You'd him. activate him. You can do a quick activation or within a multi activation for your, with your leader. I can try multi activate. Uh, what's his What's his quality? A... He is the. He's the other guy. He's the cavern crawler. Yep. He's quality four. four. No, so I'm just gonna do a. I uh, think a do quick a quick activation, activation on and him. That's a medium stick. One medium stick. Yep. Okay. And it's. Mm-hmm. Not. Yep. There you go. All right, moving on up. Uh, this guy's just gonna do a medium stick as well. Okay, quick activation on him. Smart. Yeah. Good. Get him upfield. That is a warrior, right? Edgar Warrior. Okay. Um, the Taskmaster. Uh, so I, if I want to activate him, he mm -hmm. can't move if he wants to whip other people? No, he can move. So the way he works is you're close to your leader. So I like to activate So him. you can activate him on twos. Right. Every success you give, you can give to another model, living model, to give them plus one activation. So if you activate him on twos and you get three successes, you could either give out three plus ones to three separate models, or a plus one to okay. two separate models and then do a move. Okay, I'm gonna activate mm -hmm. him then. All right, on twos. On twos. Whew, oh. Snuck that through, yeah. snuck that through. <laughs> two act so you've got two actions. Okay, so he's gonna give a... Uh, a bonus action to the scientist? Uh, yes, a bonus action to the scientist, and then he is gonna use his other point to move. That is, did I do that correct? Love it, okay. yep, perfect. So we're going to give him a plus one action right there, just to remember. Okay. All right, you moved him. Yep, he's done. Great. Um, all right, uh, scientist guy. Okay, scientist. That is this guy, so he activates on twos as well. Right, so he's normally quality three. Oh, no, he's, uh, he activates on ones because well, he's... Well, yeah, you but still you ones. still fail on Oh, ones, okay, so, so ones yep. are just auto fail. Okay. Right, you could take that plus one action and give it to the warrior since he's at quality four. That would benefit you a little bit more. You want to do that? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. So he that scientist activates on twos anyways. Okay. All right. So activating on twos. Yep. Oh. Okay. Three actions. All right. So we got uh, one. So I one. And so you spend one more move to get base to base with that artifact. Two. Mm -hmm. And now we need to decide if we want to do that quality check here. So Doug, you've got your scientist right next to that artifact. Let's see if you can activate it. So you're a quality force. three model. You're not close to your leader. So you're quality three. Yep. The first time you're trying to activate a portal, it's minus two. So you need five fours. fours. Quality three plus one from the leader's two minus two. But he's not close to the leader. Oh, not close to the leader. Yeah, so he needs Sorry. fives. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And, so, and I need two fives? You need three fives. Three fives or higher. Okay. Three fives or higher. Here we go. Nope, nope. Got one. So no activation. Nothing bad happens if you flub this. It just, it doesn't. You and didn't it's turn not off. cumulative, so I don't have to put like a one marker next to it or anything like that. Well, the, well, you can. The next time you try to activate that thing, it's going to be minus one. And then if you try to activate but it on the third still time, need, I still need three activations. You still need three successes. Three successes Correct. at one time. One time. Okay, so it doesn't. It's not like I get a, a one because I got one there. No. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, it's the number of times you try to activate. Um, an artifact on your side. All right, what do you got next? I am going to go ahead and activate this guy. Okay. And he's a Q4, but he's got plus one thanks to my leader. Mm hmm. And one because of your and Taskmaster. One of your taskmaster. So, so you're on twos, my friend. Yep. Snuck it in there yet Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Snuck it in there again. Nice. Get her done. So you, uh, yep, there you go. And then I want to make sure this is maybe with that medium here. So we're going to kind of measure it off of his base. And, and also do, put him right next. I don't have to move him a full nope. stick if I nope. don't want to. But him, put him right next to that terrain because you get um, natural cover from if that. So perfect. would I have to be like that? Nope. Or like, nope. like that? That's perfect right there. Okay. All right. Yep. He's in range there. Okay. Now you've got Melendil and your Hunter Killer now left. Okay. The Hunter Killer is just going to... Gonna do a quick activation? Yeah, he's just gonna 
cruise straight up. There you go. Make sure I got that right. My okay. advice with Melon Deal is get him somewhere safe. Doug checking his angles. Okay. Remember, he's the one with the control rod, too. Oh, yeah. He's within a long of everybody. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> so, that was the Dark Mariners on the Shadow Sea side. Or the Dark... That. So, that was the Dark Mariners on the Deep War side. How many... There's So, in the comments, say how many times you think I'm going to screw that up. <laughs> the winner gets nothing other than my eternal love. So, that was the Dark Mariners on the... Times. That's right. On the Dark Mariners side... Uh, that was the Deep Wars board. We're going to go over to the Dark Mariners Shadow Sea board next. Okay, top of turn one, Shadow Sea Dark Mariners. The first thing I'm going to do is with my telepath, I'm going to try to channel spell points. So he's next to uh, the leader here, so he channels on twos. Uh, two successes. So he's got two spell points. All right, so he's just going to hang out right there and do his thing. Next up, I'm going to try to activate the scientist. He's quality three within a long stick of my leader, so he activates on twos. Ah, uh, two successes. Thank goodness, next to the leader. So he's going to go right there, and then it's less than another medium stick, so he's just going to snuggle up right next to that artifact. All right, next up, I'm going to uh, activate Lithiana. She's going to channel spell points. She's going to activate on twos. So two spell points on her. Great, great. Thank you, excuse me, I saw the two and I thought it was one. All right, next up, um, I am going to activate the, we're gonna be smart. We're gonna activate the um, Leviathan Biomech. We're just gonna do a quick activation. We're just gonna move him up, right there. We'll do our best here, he's gonna kinda hang out. Right there. Then we are going to do a quick activation on the destroyer biomech. He's going to move up to right around there. Um, the annihilator biomech, he activates on threes. I'm going to attempt to do multiple activations on him. So threes. So two actions. He's going to move up. And he's got enough gas to get next to the treasure, but not much more than that. So we're just going to put him right there on top of the treasure and next to the cover, um, but not do anything more than that. And then last up, I've got my warrior, last model, or sorry, I've got my leader, um, Vanguard uh, Commander. He's going to activate on threes. Uh, <laughs> oh man, if that was a three, that would have been amazing. Uh, two actions, and uh, that is my turn. So we're just going to move him here. We're just going to snuggle him up next to the cover as well. All right, so that is the Dark Mariner's Shadow Sea. Ha <laughs> ha, got it right. Dark Mariner's Shadow Sea activations. We're going to hand it over to the Shadow Sea Fortune Hunters next. Okay, bottom of turn one, Shadow Sea board, Fortune Hunters. Craig, what are we doing? I'm going to lead off with some quick activations. Just Love to get it. Out of the way. Yep, yep. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this Iron Conqueror here. Mm -hmm. Get them going. Those guys look beefy and nasty. I don't th think I've played against one yet. No, this is the first time. I've yeah, I don't think they don't have that many hitboxes, but I'm sure they're well armed. And the same with the other Iron Car Conqueror as well. Right on, moving on up. Okay. And next off, I've got my leader here. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm going to go ahead and have them try multi activation. Okay, on threes. All right, three successes on your leader. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm just going to have him uh, move up here. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any special rules for cover that's this low, or will he can just hop over that? Partial cover. Oh, in terms of movement? No, yeah. just hop over it. Okay. It does provide tactical cover for shots. Right. So enemies would have... Would but have there's no yeah, there's no penalty for you to move into that. So he's going to jump in there. Yep, perfect. 
call it good for that. Mm -hmm. You are in tactical cover there. Right. Then I'm going to go ahead and activate my scientist, mm. Nereus, here. Okay, and your artifact is over there, so exactly. I'm guessing you're going to make a beeline. Yeah, and I believe they're within a long stick of my leader still, so all good. Yep. So they're normally quality three, but with the leadership, they're quality two. Yep, there we go. And by the way, those movement sticks that you're seeing that are plastic are from LitGo Game Accessories, in case you're interested. On twos? Dude. Look at you. I saw all those pips and I was thinking heroic, but standard three. Right. So. And uh, just for everyone's edification, there is kind of some going up and down the levels here. We're not taking that into account. It's just straight movement. I'm going to go ahead and start beelining my way towards the artifact. Smart. That was my wicked bad Boston accent, folks. My wife is from Boston, so I get to say things like that. It's actually not true. I get the evil eye. All right, he is cruising. Hopefully I won't come to regret this later. <laughs> Who knows? All right, what's next? All right, now I'm going to go ahead and try to activate this guy here. Is that a, what is that, a pirate? He is Seton the Mariner. Seton, Seton the, Mariner. the Mariner, okay, thank you. He's a bit of an alchemist. Oh, the alchemist, yes, yes. And again, I've... With being within a long stick of my leader, yep. he benefits. Quality from bonus. That. Will be quality two. Two. And Three. As well. Shadow Sea has such good quality on their models. When you play Deep Ward, it's kind of like, ugh. <laughs> I want to play Shadow Sea. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna get three, three actions. Go ahead and. Now, did he take any of his elixirs before the game? Yes. All right, walk, walk us through that, just so that people know. Yeah, so he, he had, uh, they come with two. So he comes with two elixirs right off the bat. He's got an elixir of zeal and an elixir of healing. Mm. And then John helped put this list together. The third one is... Acuity. The elixir of acuity, which allows them to see models that are camouflaged. Mm. Like, Natural just, cover and whatnot. And, yeah, you can take those ahead of time if you want to. So I went ahead and had the elixir of zeal and the elixir of acuity be consumed by Nereus. The gotcha. So he's on NyQuil... And on Xanax. Yes. And he is all drugged up and ready to do rock and roll. Yeah, my theory there was that because scientists are so important to this for activating those artifacts, right. I'm, I'm going to try to buff him out as yep. much as possible. Makes a lot of sense. Well done. All right, so that's all of his actions. Moving up there? Yes. Got it. All right, who's next? All right. So we've got the mad bomber in the back here. The mad bomber who bombs at midnight? Right. And let's see, I didn't quite plan that out as well as mm, I Maybe a quick to. activation so for him? So he's just going to, I think, do a quick activation and, mm -hmm. and move over this way. Are there any special rules with moving through models in? Shadow you cannot Sea? move through your own okay, models. You so cannot have move, to, you have to clear the base. So if you move up here. Mm -hmm. And we will, I think I'm just go ahead and quick activate the rest, Everybody? The rest of these. Okay. Uh, just want to risk losing any additional actions this way yeah you want to, you want to get them at least a little bit more real estate under them exactly that's a good that's a good strategy all right so we've just got some pirates of penzance with their bright shiny pants moving on up is that everybody that's everyone okay well done craig so that is shadow sea fortune hunters bottom of turn one we're going to move over to Deep Wars Fortune Hunters, bottom of turn one. Look at me, I'm so good. All right, moving on over to Deep Wars. Deep Wars Fortune Hunters, bottom of turn one, John. What's the business? Well, first up, I'm going to do uh, one breaching mag. Yeah, I'm just going to do a, a quick activation. Quick with a short stick? Yeah, just move a short stick. So yeah. You can do your uh, your standard, yeah, what do they call of... that, daisy chain? Yep. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to go activate uh, my scientist, Marie, here. Marie du Chapelet. She is quality three, but she's right next to Grace, so she activates on two. Two, do it. Two well, successes. I was, was going to say, are we going to get our first <laughs> yeah. free flub? Yeah, that was dangerously close. Whoever there. gets their first free flub has to chug a beer. It's still before noon, folks, so I don't know if that's actually okay. Actually, it's totally okay, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Let's do that. So Marie du Chatoulet moves yes. up two medium sticks. Yeah, she's trying to angle into this right. thing. But, and as yeah. John reminded us, since they've got propulsion systems that are uh, on there, they don't get to um, cruise after that, but 
That's probably neither here nor there. What's next? I'm going to activate my uh, Templar Sentinel of the Light. Sentinel of Light. And he is going to attempt to cast a spell. Ooh, are you going to do the spell or are you going to channel? I'm going to do a spell. I'm going to do Refractive Shield. Refractive Shield. Because that only requires one spell point. Right on. So you need twos? I need twos. All right. Now, so, doesn't, because he has a, couldn't he do a quick activation and that's his one spell yeah, point? Yeah, he could. Uh, but I, I want to do other things. It, you can move and cast a spell. You can't yeah. channel and move, but he probably wants to move as well. I know, but I'm just saying, if he stands still, he could just do a quick activation yep. and do it one point. He spell. could. He could. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. You know, good, good rules clarification. What do you got? Two successes. Two? So okay. he's going to cast Refractor Shield on Grace Flynn. Okay. What does that do? Um, it gives a... Well, let me read you the description. The spell creates a swirling field of ethereal energy that makes that modifies the refractive index of water on the target, making it difficult to see and target and properly with ranged attacks. Mm-hmm. So she now gets a plus two to combat score when defending against ranged attacks and spells. And does that last? How long is that? The last? entire battle. Oh, okay. Um, unless it's dispelled, um, and I don't believe there's anybody on the other side that can actually dispel I don't think it. So, so. or if your spellcaster dies, it doesn't say that here, but I'm assuming that's the case. Well, I think that's a fair <laughs> assumption. <laughs> All right, so she's... Um, if your weapons have refractive, it's actually a, a, a doubles the bonus. Right, right so but, she's got that, and yeah. do you want to spend that last point on his movement? Yeah, or? I'm going to move him up. All right. He's going to scoot along a little bit. bit. So that's okay. the dude that just cast the spell. Yep. Yep. Okay. And the spell's on the scarf one. My leader. Uh, yeah. yeah, Grace Flynn. Yep. Yeah. All right, what's next? Next, I'm going to activate uh, a Sea Dog Corsair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of them. He is greedy, though. He is greedy. So he sees that treasure. But you get to roll and see if you have to do it or not. Yep. And uh, the fun part on this is the greedy is virtually a non-entity with him because he has um, got a 2-plus will save. Well, there you go. But um, I do have to roll for his actions. Right. He has quality 3, but he's right next to Flynn, so he activates on 2. Two. Three successes. That's fine. So let's see if he's greedy. Yep, so you need two ones to activate Greedy. Yeah, if it activates Greedy, he's just going to make a beeline for that uh, yeah. for that treasure. Let's see you roll some ones. I very well may have him do that anyway. He's going to say, you yeah. might just do it anyways, but for the rolls, <laughs> you're fine. See, does he have to he's do fine. it? He yeah, reigns in that Greedy. He's going to do it now. <laughs> so he's going to spend two actions to move up along the treasure. And do you want to roll to see what you get? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see what treasure he finds. All right, so the rules for this scenario so are... Take a, an action it does, he had three actions. He oh, three. he did, right yep. here, my bad. Yep. Yeah. He's got one more action, so one is nothing. Two through five is gold, which is one victory point. Three, or sorry, six is uh, ether treasure. Yep. Ether crystal, sorry. With so, our, which are, I believe, two. Which are two. So oh. you get one gold. A so high gold. Go ahead and take that off the map. You get one victory point for gold. All right, John, what's next? Uh, the other Sea Dog Corsair. Sea Dog! Activating on two. Two again. Three successes. Yep, Ooh, you're good. Oh, it's a triple. It's, it's a triple. Triple. Sixes. It has to be two sixes. It might take success. you three to get it there. It is going to take me three yeah. to get there. Oh. We'll just get out there. That's tragic. It is I'm going to go and move it though. Oh, yeah, there. you and your ubiquitous two activations is so tragic. You know, my heart pumps peanut butter. I'm going to move my out over here though a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. All right, so you've got uh, Grace and the other mech and the crossbow dude, right? Yep, and so we'll do the, that Templar Shadow Slayer. Yep. And what do you know? He activates on twos. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> John. <laughs> Roll your dice. <laughs> oh, you got a one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I can handle that. I think we should have a special rule where John fails his activation on any roll of a one. That's right. I agree with or you. Or a one through five. Screw yeah. you. <laughs> All right, so he's he guarding uh, that treasure. Yeah. Is that gets him there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot how many. Yeah, I'm just kind of keeping him. Yep, yep, yep. Fucked up. I'm with you. Um, so now Grace goes. Yep, and she activates on twos. I'm assuming quality two. What do you? Well, what do you know? Yeah. And if you haven't seen the books for Grace Flynn, go uh, see Phil McCall and Catholson Entertainment. I'm sure uh, Grace Flynn Adventures would be interesting for everyone. So go ahead and roll them bones. So I'm activating on twos. Three successes. Oh, I saw the six. I was like, maybe heroic. That would be early. So three successes, and she moves a medium, yeah? Yeah, but I can't get a long stick. I want to sure kind of triangulate a, her. Uh, there you go, buddy. Her, her leader effect. Yeah, leaderness. Yeah. Her I, think leader. I, I think I can, if I do this right, I can get Just her. Just put her right in the middle. I think you're going to be great. I think I can get her kind of a... You put an evade action on her, and then she's minus four to hit, and 
shots. Actually, I am going to evade because I have two. I can. I have two actions remaining on that move, so I could have just done a quick action. You really could have. Yep. But evasive action. Nobody's yeah. going to shoot her in her right mind. In their right mind. Okay. Then to cap my turn with my most Ooh, dangerous well. activation, mm. I'm going to attempt to activate my breacher mech. Now he does have a control. I gave a control rod to my Sentinel of Light gotcha. pre-game, so um, he, sh- he within can- a long stick or medium. A long stick, yeah. but he only can do one mech a turn. Mech. So um, he's going to do it on this mech. So, so on threes. On threes. Roll them bones. Two successes. Good, and so two, he moves with a short stick. Short stick, so he's he's threading the needle here. There you go. All right, so I think that pretty much caps off our turn one. So we're now gonna go to the top of turn two. Dark Mariners, Deep Wars, boom, folks, got it. Turn, top of turn two, Deep Wars, Dark Mariners. Here we go. All right, bottom of turn two, Dark Mariners. Doug, what's your first action over here? I'm going to try and summon an Elder Ethereal. Oh boy, yep. summon Elder Ethereal. Right. So you've got three spell points on him already. Yep, he's within range of my leader, so I need two. Twos, oh boy. All right. Oh, you're good. So you've got five total points to do things with, because you only got a one here. So it costs four to cast. I, I have to roll again. You do, but we'll one. we'll take care of the, um, the summon first. We'll take care of the summon first, and then we'll handle the um, mutant spawn thing. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. We, we won't forget that. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. Doug, you've got five points worth of stuff to do. So you can choose to move up a little bit and then drop that ethereal. Elder Ethereal. Okay, so now you said something about evade. So if I don't move, I could drop the ethereal and then put evade on the ethereal. Correct. I, or you could put evade on yourself, not the ethereal. I'm way far away. I'm going to go By ahead. By the way, you have to roll the mutant spawn immediately. Because if you fail, you forfeit your turn. Yeah, okay. it's actions for the turn. Okay. So if he fails the mutant spawn, he does not summon the ethereal. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so unfortunately, he failed his mutant spawn. We actually checked the rules. You have to roll mutant spawn. Uh, Doug rolled a one. So what that means is that the if, uh, the ethermancer forfeits his turn. He still gets to activate the rest of it. He does lose his amplified spell points, but basically nothing happens. Yeah, I just he wasted two turns. He wasted a turn. Two turns. No, well, <laughs> this one too. Yep. Okay, so who's next? All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate the science. Oh wait, I got to move this guy first. So uh, you're moving the I'm warrior. I'm going to activate this guy. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to activate this guy first so he can distribute his plus ones. Right. Yep, that sounds like a okay, good idea. I'm going to do that then. So, so he's the raider taskmaster. He's within a long stick of the leader. So yep. on two. He's within an, an inch of the leader. Uh, yep. Alright. So three. You get to distribute three dice. Okay. Or you can use save one for movement or two for movement for him. Well, yeah. that won't work because he's not a... He's, you cannot motivate you can't artificials. Yep, only living there. models. Um, you want to give one to your scientist so that he can uh, make it he's, easier to... He's act. already at within range, so he's already going to be rolling twos, I think. Let me check right, but that. you're still at minus one if you're trying to activate oh, yes, that I portal. Am. Thank you. We'll do that. That's a good yep. plan. Well, that, that's an activation. That's a portal... Uh, it's a you're, it's a quality check, but it's not an activation. Right, but it, yeah, does Taskmaster do all quality checks? Yeah, we have to look at that okay. real quick. Um, that I don't know. Okay, and this guy is going to come. Plus one quality checks made by any figure within medium stage. Okay, so that would work. On it the, would work on the scientist. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so that you, guy's done. Okay, you gave. And did you move him? I'm I, sorry. I moved him a little bit, and I gave out two dice. Roger that. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move this guy. I activate okay. him. So he activates on twos, long stick of leader, and plus one from the Taskmaster. Nice, so three actions. So you might go find yourself a treasure, I'm thinking. There's a good possibility of that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. So I can't do, so I have to go one, two. You would have to spend all three actions to go get that thing and find out what it is. Well, that's what we're here for. Yep. (laughs) All right, so you activated him. Now you get to roll one d six. What do you six? Make up for that crap. Do it. No. Well, you get gold. Yep. So we get one golden treasure, one victory point, and there we go. Okay, I am gonna activate this guy. Okay. He run, activates on threes. In yep, he's within a long stick of your yes. leader with the control rod. So threes. 
got two. Two. That's perfect. Yep, yep. He is not a spawn, so I don't have to worry about that crap. Nope. Uh, he is going to run up and grab a treasure. All right, which he can do. And if he's like that, then he's got some some cover, right, against those guys? Yeah. If they come. Okay. Yeah, well, it depends on the angle, but sure. Ah, another gold. That's okay. So okay. another victory point. All right, so who's left? You got that warrior. You got Melendil. You I basically got, the got uh, these three guys and my leader. Yep. Okay, who do you want uh, to do next? I am going to go ahead and activate this guy. Okay. He is within... Within a long? Within a long stick, so he's on... Uh, on threes? On threes. Do you want to do that before you do the scientist? Um, scientist activates on twos. Well, I'm thinking, though, because he's probably within the three long sticks, and so as soon as I activate the scientist, he's going to get sucked that way, and he can't make it to that treasure. Yeah, but also his guys are going to get slurped in. Up to you. I'm, I'm, taking, want to... I'm taking a chance. Yeah, well, actually, that's true, because we've got the one free Yep, I'm taking flub. a chance. And there and it is. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can choose to keep your one action and not turn over the turn. Or we can turn over the turn. I suggest you take your action and move him. You were moving the warrior, right? Yes. Right. I'll say so you're saying so I could just move the warrior and... One then... medium stick. Okay. Yep. And keep going with your turn. And keep going. But the now, next flub... close to the Doom Clam? We are close to the Doom Clam. Is so thing we're going to have to do something with that, yeah. Oh, John's yeah. going to look up those rules because honestly okay, I can't remember. I'm going to back that up. <laughs> I think you got to stay outside of a short stick of him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm in a short stick. The, the so uh, Thulsa Doom Clam. The Thulsa Doom Clam. <laughs> Move your dude. There. Okay. So now right. he's. Are you with outside of short? What? I... There. Yeah. We'll call yes. that fun. <laughs> Due to a, a bridge. Yes. Okay. So sorry about that. Wasted our one. Okay. okay that's all right. So I'm gonna go... any, by the way, any model that moves within one short stick of the Doom Clam must defend against a range attack with a combat score of seven. Or be sucked into the clam shell where it's crushed by the heavy shell and muscular tongue with armor break three. Then you have to do a strength check to escape. So it's a good thing to stay away from that thing. But if you're going to get that treasure, you're going to have to evade that uh, doom clam. I did not know the doom. I thought that was okay. I did not know. It's okay. That. All right. It's okay. You're doing the right thing, going for treasures. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try the scientist, scientist now. Yep. Okay, so activating on twos. Oh, I failed on that one. Yep. That's good. Okay. Oh, I was going to say almost heroic. So now you've got three actions. I can try to activate it three times. You really could. So you are plus one on all quality checks this turn. Okay. So this turn, the portal is minus one. Yeah. Because it's this, or this no, time, it's, it's, it's minus one. Because of my... Correct. Okay. So you would be activating that thing on... So you're minus it was one. Five before. It's one less plus... I got the plus but you're, one. But you're also within a long stick of your leader, so it would be twos, right? So he's base quality three. Okay, that leader takes it to two. Two. The taskmaster takes it to one. One. The minus one, one takes, takes it, it to two. two. Okay, yeah, right. so twos. All right. Yep. Activating that portal on twos, you need three two ups. And I did it. And nailed it. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, we got a little overzealous. We're going to roll that. So now we. Um... Okay, so Doug has activated. An artifact. That means we need to roll low for this one or high for that one. Doug rolled D6 and that determines which portal we activate. Ah! We activate the other one. So the first thing that happens is two treasures. John, why don't you do me the honor? Two treasures within base to base contact of that portal. Right, just right on the front there. It's fine. Yep. And then the Spinosaur pops out. <laughs> Right in base to base. Yep. The creatures act in the wild creature phase, sea creature or land creature. So basically he pops out. Now, every model within three long sticks gets affected by the portal. If you're big, you're affected with one stick smaller than normal, but everything within three long sticks gets pulled closer to the portal by one medium stick. So let's work that out right now. Oh boy. All right, so since a long stick is just a hair over seven inches, we're just gonna make use a uh, tape measure to make this easy. So 21 inches. So every model within a 21 inch radius is gonna get pulled one medium stick closer to the portal. Now, if you're big or huge, you get pulled one short stick closer to the portal. Which would be the iron conqueror. 
Right. Now, terrain will stop you. If you hit terrain, you take a strength check to see if you take a wound. So, and we're measuring from the very back of the portal here. So what's affected on your side? I believe all of my models are affected except for this Iron Conqueror. Okay. And of course, obviously not, not those guys. So far. these fellas are all pulled. Except he's pulled a short. These okay. folks are all pulled a medium. Now my leader here, would those trees and rocks? I would. I would terrain? say yes. Yeah. You're in cover, so you basically just take a strength check to see if you take a wound. But other than that, um, okay. yeah. So everybody moves. So I think those guys just freely move a medium. Yep. Well, yeah! at, least, at least I'm going towards the treasure. There's, and there's treasures there. Um, they dodged hitting that rock. That was close. Yep. Um, well, I guess this is going to get interesting. It is going to get very, very interesting. And I would say your Iron Conqueror. And they're a short. They are a short, yep. Because he's large. Because he would have rammed right Yeah, I think that. you're you're not hitting that thing. I think you're just shy. Now, can I hit my own models? I think you just position them, like, just position them the best you can. Don't worry about that. Yep. Yep. So the only, does any, did anybody hit anything here? I don't think so. No. I think just your leader right. hits something. And a strength check is on a... On 3d6, and the strength of that model is, which one's your leader? Where's your leader? Captain Balthasar Drake. Strength is five up. So you need at least two five ups to avoid getting a wound, right? Okay. Thanks. All right, here we go. Make you take one wound and fallen. Okay, so that's it for you. Let's see, let's see what happens to my guys. I think Doug's still going. Oh, are you, any of your guys in range? Well, at least the Leviathan's in range, for sure. Sorry. You're not sorry. No, I am. I just saw a great giant pile of dudes, and I'm like, okay. A little bit more, I think. <laughs> just the Leviathan, I think. Yep. And he's just big, the, too. And he's it? big, so he'll move one short stick. Closer to... Closer to the treasure. Yeah, basically drags me right there. Okay, well, that was exciting. So we got the two treasures. That is now activated. That guy activates during the wild creature phase. Which is the end of the turn. Which is the end of the turn. Now, anytime somebody activates a artifact now, again, we'll roll high-low, depending on what table you're on, and it could deactivate this thing. This guy is not affected by the pull. Next turn, the pulse will pull everything one smaller stick, um, but it's potentially going to get turned off um, before that. All right. Doug, that was you, right? I, I put these two dice out just to mark the two guys. I wasn't, I hadn't moved yet because I didn't know gotcha. how long that was going to take. So okay. I'm move those back out. Let's uh, let's take care of those guys. Okay. Uh, just a quick question: Can I attack the clam? Um, um, no, I don't think it's got a stat. It doesn't have a stat line. You just have to avoid getting hit by it. Right. Okay. It's not hard. If you, you, what it means is you don't want to throw in a low combat score model near it. Right. Because all you have to do is dice plus combat. You need a seven or higher. Right. It's not terribly hard no. to do, but. It could hurt you if you fail it. All right, the clam. <laughs> the false doom clam. Yeah. The false doom clam is uh, causing See. Doug some shellfish reaction. Yeah. Oh, that's See, terrible. That was shellfish of me. Yeah. All right, what are we doing? That was worse. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be all day, folks. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate that guy. <laughs> that feller, the uh, raider yep. cavern crawler. Yes. Activating on threes. Uh, threes. Yep. All right, do it. Oh, no, 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 no. That was, no, yeah, that was, was it was that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tragic. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, that would have been amazing. Two? So two actions. Alright, he's gonna come back over this way then. Well, I'm gonna try and find that. No, 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 I'm not gonna mess with it. Oh, I think I still have some activations with that guy left. You really do. Um we'll come back to that. Okay. We'll splice that in. I get to the right table edge. Do you want me to do that first before I move this guy? I'm gonna splice it's, it in. You keep doing it. You okay. keep doing you. We we'll just say okay. we forgot to do the rest of your actions. So you okay. you did that on the first action. Yes, and so I have you've two. got two more actions. Honestly, I'm not sure I would do anything with him. No, I I think actually you, know, you want to spend an action and put a date on him in case yes, somebody please, decides to. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. We forgot to do that, folks. Sorry, that's a little bit out of order. Okay, he's kind of doing his ninja <laughs> ninja vanish. Right, let's make sure. 
Yes, he well, did. the Dark Mariner's turn started out pretty, pretty bad. Pretty, pretty poorly. <laughs> Love you, Doug. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I sucked. Yeah, I yeah. understand. But no that Spinosaur is going to um, cause some havoc. Stay, Operation Stay Away from Spinosaur. All right. You're good? Yeah. He's, oh, he's going to... Um, Mill and Deal. I already, can I roll to... I want to do more actions. I screwed that up. I, do, I just want to put a date on. Yeah, go ahead. So I, uh, I, I want to. I want to activate. We'll put him. him back. Okay. Because yeah. if you flub this thing, he may not. Move. He may not. Yeah, move. it's not okay. a big deal. Though. Not a big deal, but yeah, I totally fine. I don't have an issue. So okay. activating on what? Twos, right? Isn't he a two? Oh god, yeah. I hope so. Otherwise, we're turning over the turn. Well, it is the last guy to go on Doug's side, so it just go to your turn. Yeah, no, he's threes. So he do I get my one move and then? Yeah, you get one move and then it goes. All right, right, fine. So well, oh, okay. I thought it was for the whole side. No, no, no. Oh, otherwise that'd be way too. I guess I, yeah. we haven't, we even talked about this. Okay, so okay, yeah. so one action and then yeah, uh, yeah. since All it's he his did was move, so he didn't get to evade. And, right, and I'm done. And you're done. So we're gonna go over to top of turn two. Shadow Sea Dark Mariners. There you go. Bam. Okay, top of turn two. Shadow Sea Dark Mariners. The first thing I'm gonna do is activate my telepath. I'm going to try to cast a spell of Zone of Terror. That's a Psychic Conjuration spell. So it takes at least spell power three. So I've got to get at least one action. So he is normally quality... I want to say he's normally quality three. Yep, normally quality three. He's within a long stick. So activating on twos. Uh, so three points. So I've got a total of five points. I need three points to cast the spell. So that means I get to do two medium moves. And then I can cast it. So we're going to go... There. Ooh, I don't know how close I want to get. There. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to move there. Kind of like right there. Boop. I'm going to evade, and then I'm going to cast the spell. So let me put out my pie plate for the spell. That's three medium sticks away. Is that a psychic? It is psychic. Put that right there. That's his zone of terror. All right, next up, I'm going to activate Lithiana. She's going to activate on twos. I am going to attempt to summon the Proto Spawn of Yosof. I can use the spell points that I channeled last turn for that, but whatever actions I roll for her don't go towards that. I can go towards action, but I'm going to lose one of these spell points, but two of them can go towards. Um, uh, summoning the proto spawn if I don't flood my activation. Too bad me. On twos. Uh, I got two actions. I do not believe she's a um, mutant spawn. She is not. So I can do two actions and then drop that proto spawn. So we're going to come back and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm move sure her up here. a little bit. <laughs> I've got two actions here. So I'm going to move her there. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to give her an evade. So I'm going to use two long sticks, and I'm going to put the proto, -Yos proto spawn of Yosof right there. Boink. That causes madness, um, and then I'm going to use, so that was one action, I used the two spell points from before, so I've got one more action, I'm going to put an evade token on her. Alright, next up I'm going to try to activate the scientist, um, so it's minus two because this is the first time he's tried to activate this particular artifact um scientist tech level two so it's minus two within a long stick of my leader so he's normally quality two so i activate i activate the model on twos but i activate the artifact on fours so let's first try to activate the model i'm going to do multiple activations on twos oh hey, did you guys already spend we already right? spent but i do get my one action yeah. So, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to attempt that um, portal activation on fours, and then we turn over the turn. So I need three fours in order to activate a portal. Nope. Um, and that was, uh, he's a mutant spawn, but it doesn't matter because I turned the turn over anyway. Well, he might not have been able to activate, but it doesn't right, matter. Right, right, right. So Actually, no activation. Roll that because that may affect his activation next roll. Is if he fails the mutant spawn that's check, true. That's true. That's true. Uh, if I, turn. if you roll a one, then he would have flubbed it. No, that's fine. Yeah. So I'm at minus two next turn on mine. No, you're you're even. 
because I think the, he's you know. talking about the portal activation. Yeah, okay. yeah the portal activation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so that is it for the Dark Mariners on the Shadow Sea side, top of turn two. We're going to move over to the Fortune Hunters, Shadow Sea, bottom of turn two. All right, bottom of two, Shadow Sea, Fortune Hunters. Craig, what's up? I'm going to get some quick activations okay. first. You got dragged in close to the Spinosaur, but you're going to try to see if you can get away from him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the Iron Conqueror, because they're not going to be afraid by, of this uh, nope. effect, is just going to wade right into nope. it. They care not for that zone. Yep. And the other Conqueror as well. Mm -hmm. going to have them Cares not. move up here. Yep. Almost like a tracks. <laughs> that is, that's and, like a, a robot <laughs> magnet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this pirate here, I'm going to have them uh, back up as well, I think, a little bit. Get away! Ah, oh, God! And with the medium stick, it's not necessarily in a straight line, correct? There can be some it has to be in a straight line, unless you've got uh, maneuverable, I believe. You want to move the other pirate first. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say order of activations here is important. Does the Spinosaur have anything like terror? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. I'll go ahead and copy one yeah. reef. Yeah, ahead. it's right over there. Okay. I'll move, I'll simple activate this pirate rogue. Yeah, the Spinosaur is frightening. It has a lot of Very, very frightening it. indeed. Okay, very, very I'm going to angle them a little bit differently so, <laughs> yep. they, so when they get drugged by the portal, they don't <laughs> ram into that rock without dropping. <laughs> Stay away yeah. from sharp, heavy objects. All right. Exactly. What's and, next? Uh, and then the, the Mad Bomber will also simple activate. Who bombs at midnight, yep. All right. John, what's that from, the evil midnight bomber? The Tick. The Tick. That's yeah, right. the best episode of the Tick ever, when they were bombing the superhero nightclub. Yes. All right, Craig, what's next? <laughs> uh, then I'm going to do a full activation here. You mean uh, try to roll multiple activations? Right, multiple yeah, yeah. activations. Okay. And that is... Close to your leader. Right, that's just one of my pirate... Adventurers, so they're quality three. Okay, they're so two. Years, so they're quality two. Do it! Oh my oh. god! <laughs> so you can take this flub and run with it, or you can end your activation and pass on to John. You do. You, you can do run get, with it. You do get your one action though. You do. Get, regardless, you get your one action. Right. You can run with it if you want. Right? Uh, let's run with it. Okay, so you get your one action. What do you want to do? I may have a rough turn because I'm feeling I'm going to flub mine too. Right, <laughs> do I'll... it. They're gonna move. move I think it's to the Operation action. Get the Heck Away from Captain Spinosaur. <laughs> exactly. They do have terror, by the way. And what does that do, real quick? Um, any model wishing to enter hand to hand must roll a will check with two successes. Enter hand to hand. Got on it. two failures, the model can do another action but cannot charge the terrifying model. On three failures, they must move one move directly away from it. And when it charges, <laughs> the model must immediately make a morale check. So it doesn't do anything if you're just kind of hanging yeah, around. Right. It's only if you want to charge it. Did. Got it. So what they're saying is charging a basically a dinosaur is a bit of a scary thing. <laughs> right. They're saying that that might end badly. <laughs> All right, Craig, what's next? Uh, then I'm going to uh, do a multiple activation on the Witch Slayer. Again, they're okay. quality three, but they're close enough to my leader, leader. to drop that down to mm -hmm. a two. You're good. So, so two actions. <laughs> you were hopeful. I was. All right. Let's have them... You're going to want to try to get a line of sight on somebody, if you can. Well, have to. well you're going to want to shoot, you want to try to knock me down so the Spinosaur goes after me. Yeah, that's he's the, a peaceful man. Right. That's the plan. But so you, he goes after knock You down either creatures. want to knock down, transfix, entangle, or flee a model. Right. Because if the Spinosaur sees a dude nerve break running, that induces the uh, primer. Mm. Okay. You saw Jurassic Park. All right, next I'm going to, I'm going to... Risk things again. I, I Craig, really want to. Craig, get... why? No, <laughs> go for it. I'll get, I'll get ready to take. So, my, <laughs> my leader has fallen. Yep. And he's Can't kind of up. far from the action over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to multi-activate them so he can get up and do other right. things. Right. So you need more than one action to but do he's other. Only quality three. Quality three. You're fine. Okay, you got a couple. You do, you, so you can stand up. So with one action, will the real still Slim Shady? He will stand up. Yep, and do a thing. And then he's going to move. Now that puts these guys over here out of any range or hope of multi-activation. You're good with that. I'm I'm fine with that. All right. Yes. But I'm, you know, this way he's close good. enough. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. You can do your thing. Models. Okay. And he's out of the 
Now we got to be careful over here because of the madness thing. So the your leadership bonus will be negated, but it's still good to have them over there. Unless they've got iron will, which I doubt they, they do. I don't believe they do. Well, um, the uh, Nereus is fearless, but mm. I don't believe fearless I don't think affects... that affects madness, no. no. Okay, what's next? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and multi-activate Nereus, the gun totem scientist. Okay, what's he normally on? He's quality three. Mm-hmm. Now, so we, long stick, right? right? Right, so he's within range of my leader. Right, but, but you're also within a long range. stick of the proto spawn, so you're activating on threes. All right. Ooh. Oh, oh, so oh. close to heroic. So you get two. Right. So you got some options. Yeah, you right. want to think about that? Uh, let's go ahead, and he's going to... He does have rapid shot, by the way, so if he hits one shot, he can immediately take a second shot if he still has an action. Right. He's going to go ahead and move to be okay. close to the object, but for a second action, he's going to go ahead and... and uh, try to shoot somebody? ...fire at that scary creature to try to... Well, they're all scary creatures. Well, that's true. <laughs> Which scary creature the are we one that's... Uh, right in front of you? ...doing the zone. The protospawn. Around. The protospawn of Yosa. Yes. Okay, great. We'll come right back. All right, Craig, so your gunslinger is shooting the protospawn of Yosef. Walk us through what you've got there. So they're combat four, and yep. the pistols gives a plus two, so that would be up to six. Yep. And then you're large, so put me at seven. Right, and I'm going to do an emergency of eight, which means I forfeit all my actions next turn, but it's minus two to your combat score. Right, so I'm so, dice plus five. And I'm dice plus three. Here we go. Mm, so you definitely hit me. Definitely. So you are five, six, seven, eight. And I am four, so you doubled me. So that means I am, I don't think he's, pretty sure he's not tough. So that means I am, take a wound and I'm fallen. Two wounds are fallen. Two wounds and fallen, yeah. correct. So that means he's got one more wound on his body. Jeez. All right, so we'll put a fallen on him and uh, we'll keep moving. Okay, Craig, what's next? Okay, so I've got a pirate adventurer. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna undo a multiple. Oh boy. Them. They're quality three. Threes! Oh, so close. <laughs> Almost failed that one. All right, so you get two actions. What do you want to do? All right, so they're going to move over here and for second action, grab some treasure. Right, and the reason you're not running away from the Spinosaur is? Well, I believe if I don't have any other models that are fallen, right, that it will go after your fallen models. Right, it prioritizes a fallen model first. There's right. no way he's going to get there. But you've kind of mitigated the Spinosaur eating your entire army by yeah. making one of my guys fall. I also had the thought of, even if no one was fallen, yep. they go for the lowest point cost model. Is that correct? Correct. And my pirate rogue back here is only 36 points. So, you no, have no, to no, no, chase no, no. Not sure we care so much about that guy. But, <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. We'll double check our rules on that just to make sure. But I think, so you need to roll what that treasure is. Right? Right. So, let's give me, give me a D6. Gold. So one gold. I will put it on our pile. Yep. So one gold. So I think you guys have two and we have two? Yeah. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll recap yeah, at the end. All right. So, Craig, you've got a couple more models, yeah? Just one more. One more. What are we doing? Uh, Seton the Mariner. Is Seton the Mariner. I'm going to his last one, so might as well go for multi. Multi! Multi three. Two. So you got a couple there. Two actions. What do you want to do? Can you aim grenades in... Yes. Oh, I think it's just like a shooting attack, right? It is 100% like a shooting attack. So he can chuck... Because he throws his grenades a long stick. Yep. So if he aims, he can chuck a grenade two long sticks away. So you're less than a long stick away. You're well, maybe he wants to shoot at... You could shoot somebody else. He could chuck a grenade right here. You could. And with no penalties, because it'd be an aim shot. What do you want to do? Uh, yeah, let's see if I can pull that off. Okay. He has, right. a, he has a mighty... By the way, normally you cannot throw a grenade that far. Yes. <laughs> but he has a powerful special ability which lets him chuck grenades a long stick. He's beefy. All right, let's come back and do the math. Okay, Craig, you are going to take your bomber, dude, and you're going to throw a grenade at my Annihilator Biomech way from downtown. So walk us through your math. Base, a combat four. Yep. Plus one for the weapon itself, and then plus one for you being large, you put me at six. Right, and I have natural armor, which makes you minus one at range attacks if I'm next to natural scenery. So you are dice plus five, and my combat score is four. So it's five versus four. Here we go. Ooh, you beat me by ooh, two. Yeah, didn't double. I don't, you sure as heck didn't double. My armor is two. 
nuclear armor break too. And it also got ignite on that. That happens at the end of the turn, yeah. So I think you do a wound, right? If you equal? If you equal, you do a wound and he has fallen. Yep, wound okay. and fallen. And by the way, ignite, um, if you win by one or more point, the defender must roll a quality check with two successes or is burning. I think that happens at the end of the turn. It says to roll it, right? If it, if you right now? Combat. So the burning effect comes in later. But yeah, seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're seeing if you were on fire. Okay, does lead, does that affect leadership? Or just like the leader? It would. It would if it, yep. It's a quality check. And so. then yeah, yeah. you have your scientist, you have to roll. We'll, we'll, have him we'll, we'll roll him next, right? Okay. So let's. Uh, can you get me my other red dice for my quality check? You should have one more over there oh, somewhere. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, so he is hit, and so now I need to roll Ignite, so that's a quality check. I'm near my leader, so it's a three, so on a quality check, I need at least two threes. Uh, heroic, not burning, <laughs> so he is not ignited. <laughs> um, but now we need to roll against my scientist, who's within the blast radius so of that. Score on it because this You're score cray, you rolled, rolled a... Six. I think I rolled a five and you rolled a six. Yeah, so he had eleven. Eleven. But the, but I Minus. Think you get the plus one for the big target, though. No. You don't. It's correct. Ten. So it would be and a ten. Minus one for the radius. So he's at right. a nine. So you're at a nine. So I have to roll against a nine. I believe my scientist is combat two. Two by the natural. But natural. We already took the natural armor right. into account. So. Nine versus two. Uh, so not and doubled. Double. So five's not doubled. So just a wound and fall. Wound and fall. Now see if he ignites. Right. And uh, quality twos on him. He is not ignited. Yeah. All right, so fallen and one wound on him. All right, so pretty good rolling over there. Is that everybody? That's my last model. All right, so we're going to go to bottom of turn two, Fortune Hunters, Deep Wars. All right, Deep Wars, bottom of turn two, Fortune Hunters. John, what's the plan? Well, first up, I'm going to do a, a quick activation on my uh, upfront breacher mech here. Got it. All uh, right. So I'm just going to get a short stick, and I'm just going to have him advance upwards a little bit. Yep. Um, just a nice, safe little poke. Um, I like to kind of mix yeah, things yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. Then um, next up, I'm going to go over to my uh, Sea Dog Corsair, mm -hmm. who is going to um, attempt multiple activations, and he will activate on two. Are you within a long? I am. All right. Easily. Oh, all right. Almost like I positioned it that mm. way. Don't trust your long stick judgment. Kidding. Messing with you. You're two fine. successes. Two. All so right. he's going to do an aim shot yep. at that guy. And if I measured it correctly, he should be within two. Yep. And he is. So um, my horse here I'm is. Going to emergency evade. You really want to burn your whole turn? Yeah, what else is he going to do? He's going to okay. get shot. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. And that way, if he misses him, he doesn't get to hit him. That's true. That's a very good point. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So Emergency have, evade. I have combat four, and my weapon gives me plus one, so dice minus five, five. and I aim, so I don't have any penalties for two medium sticks. Right. Um, he has a large target as well, isn't he? Uh, let's check is that. Is that this guy? No, that's this guy. He that guy is he's not large. large. He's no. not large. Okay. So, so your combat four. Um, minus one for aiming. Minus one. Is I aimed. Because, right, because you aimed, so he's three. But you're also, you are minus one because he's next to I'm, natural cover. Yes. Right? And then minus... Is that natural cover, is that to their bonus or is that to mine? Well, that was just, that was the exact same thing as yeah. my guys. Natural. So natural armor. Natural. So I'm at five range. right now. Should be on your armor description up top. Natural ranged attack versus model at minus one of okay. adjacent okay. to natural scene. So right? I'm, at, I'm at four right You're now. at four. And we're at three, right? Because right. armor, our uh, combat four. Three, minus one five. because of your aim. Yeah. Uh, but you'll be at five because of your aim. Because of your aim. Well, no, it's minus two to you. Isn't to it? me. Right. right. So I'm at you're dice. Three. I'm at three and you're at four. We're at three. You're at four. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot of math. <laughs> three versus four. Doug. John, here we go. Oof. Miss. Just a miss. Yep. All right. And there's no bounce to where you can still. No, aim you, if you, the bounce. way that the way that uh, templates work with range shot is that you have to hit, otherwise there's no well, hitting. I think, I think grenades can bounce, but like other blast weapons mm, don't have. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's his activation. Yep. All right. Who's next? Uh, next up, we will activate my uh, my Templar Shadow Slayer here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be somewhat similar, I'm thinking. He's a little range that I think is a little worse on him. Yeah, I think you're just. Oh, I might. Are you in? You looked like you were in. I think I'm in. Yep. You're in. Okay, so okay. same, same? Yeah, probably. Let's okay. see how many actions I get. Now, yeah, oh, Activating fair. on twos. Fair. 
three successes. Right. And remember, you guys burned your flub. So I know. If you flub, I'm, you're I'm aware. You're yep, yep. Um, so I'm going to go ahead then and do a two point aim shot at the. Uh, at so that it's guy. four versus four this time. So now it's four versus four because you yep. get the extra plus one. Yep. All right. So Doug, John, four versus four. Nine. Uh, beat me by one point. Nine to eight. So what's your armor break? Uh, my armor break uh, is one. I think you're going to be, I think you're knocked back. What's oh, your, 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 your three arm, yeah. front? Yep, your armor is three. Okay. So you do not break armor. What was the totals again? I got nine. It was nine versus eight. Nine okay, versus yep. Eight. yep. So is, he's knocked back, right? Yeah, he's knocked back. Knocked back, not fallen, but you're knocked back to one um, base size. So we're just going to go like this. <clears throat> and oh, you're still evading. All right, cool. <clears throat> Doom. All right, surviving. I think the evade saved my butt. There. It really, it really kind of <laughs> I did. Think it was a decent decision. Yes. All right, what's next, John? Next, I'm going to activate my uh, Sentinel of Light here. Yeah, you are. And he's going to attempt to cast the uh, same spell he cast last turn. Uh, the the shieldy thing. Yeah, the shield thing. Yep. So, All right. On twos. Uh, three successes. So yep. I'm going to have him advance upwards, and he's going to cast it onto my scientist. Yeah, and you can't cast it twice on the same model. Right. 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 So you can have it on, you can cast it on every single model once, but you... Wow. And it's only against shooting? Is that uh, true? Shooting and certain Spells. magic types. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have a little marker or something to show? So that we know. Yeah, probably should. But yeah, let's good. do that. Let's pick something that we don't How about hero do. points? Yeah, sure, why not? Because there, there goes my hero. Yeah. Until every model on my team has Sorry. it. Too much? Too sometimes, much. Sometimes I'm too much. <laughs> and once every model on my team has it, I'll just withdraw it. <laughs> all the time. Smart ass. All right, who's next? Uh, next up, I'll do my other uh, sea dog here. Okay. Uh, so he does it on threes. Oh, twos. Twos, yep. Oh. Three successes. Oh, oh was that a six? Yeah, no, I thought it was for, for a second. I two. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, God. We'll go ahead and holy uh, moly, he's from downtown. We'll have to zoom up a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. then I'm gonna have um, I'm that gonna was have, all three of them, yeah. That's yeah, all yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have Grace Flynn go, okay, on a quality two on twos, two successes. Ooh, oh. Barely two is enough. Keeping up with the rest of my team here, yep. And let me see. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, it's not an aim shot, but I'll go ahead and fire a shot into him. Mine as well. It's just worth a gamble. Yep. Um, so it's not aim, so it's going to be a minus two, so it's going to be rough math. Um, so she is combat three, plus one from the spear gun is four, minus two for range is two. Minus two for evade. Zero. Minus one for natural armor. So your dice minus two? Minus, minus one. one. Dice, dice minus one. And I'm at dice... Plus three. Yep. Right? Correct. Yeah. Well, no, you were dice plus three because he aimed last time. Awesome. Uh, dice no, plus four. you're dice plus four. Yeah, I don't think this is good. Might as well. It's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, it's not going to. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Uh, All right. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to activate my uh, last breacher mech. Is this the um, that one. the the uh, multi activation one? Uh, yeah. Did, yeah. Did, I'm going to daisy multi. chain those yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, so I need threes. All right. Rolling on threes. Oh, you took it in. You just... got it. You got it. And that's your last one, yeah? Yeah, that's my last one. All right, so I'm suspecting you're going to move up. Yeah, I'm going to move up. I'm not quite sure where yet. But uh, You could even shoot, couldn't you? I could. Who are you going to shoot? I don't I don't know if I can even Is it a long shooter? See. No, but I, I don't know if I can see anybody. Oh, uh, long um, I can. I can see him, but the math is going to be The really... math is going to be super janky. Yeah, you want to just move him? I'm guessing it's going to be... Uh, Three long, yeah, it's three sticks. You might away. just want to move him just to get him positioned. Yeah, I think I'm going to move him another short stick. Yeah. Uh, did you do your scientist last turn? Or? I did not. I forgot about that, yeah, so my don't... scientist can still go. I'm going to say, <laughs> you want to do some portal action, I'm thinking. The scientist hiding. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to do portal action, actually, because that gets really screwed up. In yeah, you're going gonna... to. <laughs> In fact, I may be eating a portal here. Uh... <laughs> no, he only moves the short stick. He'll be fine. You could there. also turn that portal off. Yeah. yeah. Remember, I, I don't really want to do that. Right fair now. enough. Fair enough. I may my thoughts may change later, but all right. So we're declaring victory on turn two. 
End of turn two. Yeah. End of turn two. I'm <laughs> sorry, declaring completion of turn two. Yeah, we're yeah. going to say a Fortune Hunter victory in that. Yeah, yeah. Video's over, folks. Thanks, guys, for watching. Yeah. So at the bottom of turn two, we are at two golden treasures for the Dark Mariners. We're at two golden treasures for the Fortune Hunters. Currently, the Dark Mariners have a portal open. So if it stays open and no one else activates a portal, they'll get six victory points, but we don't do that until the end of the game. Ah, but we have one thing left to do before the turn is over. Before we end the turn, boom, boom, boom! What are we doing here? He's gonna okay. spread towards that So he's gonna look shot. for any model in his line of sight that has been rendered fallen, no, transfixed, entangled, constricted, or is fleeing. He Let's, can't see him. I don't know if he can see him. Uh, Let's take a look. There's two. He's high up, though. Let's take a look. <laughs> If I were a Spinosaur, if I was a Spinosaur eyeball, could I see him? I don't know if he can see him. Not just his eyes, but his sense of smell is cute. <laughs> Line of sight, right? So yeah. I would say, Craig, check me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any of my fallen guys are in line of sight of him. Please validate. I, I concur. Okay. I don't want to, because it is my guy. These I don't, guys are definitely hiding behind the rocks. Definitely, okay, so there's no one fallen or transfixed within line of sight. What's next on the rubric? Then he will stock the model with the lowest point value. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and he will move a long stick, because that is his movement rate, towards said right. model. Now, he's not maneuverable, is he? No. So he has to move straight long stick. Oh, you've got a long stick. So, uh, he so it, does the proximity matter? Closest, or just... Lowest point. Lowest model. point model proximity does not matter. So if you've got somebody lower than 36, he'll go after that. Oh, uh, there is a pirate brigand here. But that no, that's a pirate adventurer. There's 63 points. Yeah, what's your right. lowest point model? Yeah. Ooh, the Iron can... Conquerors are 84. The, the Adventurers are 63. He's your cheapest. Right. He's 36. But are they within... No, he'll just no, stalk it. He'll just move towards, towards it. Oh, yeah, he just moves towards oh, it. Oh, right. Okay. And then he can attack the guy that he's going to end up next to? No, no he's, he's, he's just for fun? No, he just goes for the... Uh, he's just going for the, the lowest uh, point model. So the pirate rogue at 36 is definitely the lowest Now, on, now here's the issue list. it might have, though, is when he stalks towards this, he might end up seeing that. Yeah, that's but fair. That's a, we'll we'll yeah. take that as it comes. Yeah. All right, so we move... Craig, you want to do the honors? Move him one long stick closer to um, Captain 36 points? Sure. What's his name again? He's just a pirate. Pirate Brigand. Scrub. No, a pirate, a pirate Rogue. Scr 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 pirate Rogue. Scurvy. Scurvy Pirate Rogue. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move this back toe yes. one long stick because the base yeah. is a, ooh, it's, it's a little awkward. Yeah, it's all right. You know, so, intent is really where we're at. We're having fun. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. He, he really does not care about the guy no. like right next to him. That I, have he to give, I have to give points to this pirate. Yeah. Because, because that like, pirate is saying, Bring it. Yeah, there's a treasure over there. I don't care about you know, the You know, that water. is Sam Neill in Jurassic Park. He's just like waving at the dinosaur, not doing anything. That's here's exciting. A, here's a trivia check. Spinosaurs are my favorite dinosaurs. True statement. All right, we're done with the bottom of two. We're going to start, start at the top of turn three, Deep Wars, Dark Mariners. All right, we are starting the top of turn three, and since we have a portal activated, we need, the first thing we need to do is identify the drag. So this turn, it is three medium sticks long, the drag, not three long sticks. So a medium stick is, how many inches, Craig? Basically five. It's a little okay. under five. So let's call it 15 inches, on just a freckle under 15. So anything under 15 inches from the back of that portal is going to get a short stick drag. If it's a large base, it's going to get no drag. Or a lar not a large base, a large model, larger huge model, no drag. Um, and the wild creatures do not get dragged at all. So who do we got? I would say... We've got this Dark Mariner. Yeah, he's a large though, so he's he large. won't get dragged. And this pirate here. Yeah. Is, is this guy within 15? Here. Let's recheck it. Oh, I think we tag him. Yeah. Yeah, we get him. So those two. So those guys all get dragged a short. And then after this turn, there's no more dragging. Unless it gets turned off and then turned back on in, then we start the whole thing over. All right, so we're dragging him a short. Yep. Oh uh, God! Templar, drag him a short. 
Okay. And was that other dude, that little 36 point dude, was he within? Let's see. Let's Let see. He check. He is not. Nope. Just nope, just outside. outside. How's, yep. the, how's the Leviathan? He's big, so he doesn't get dragged oh, this turn. Yeah, yeah. But we did check. Um, I think that's it, right? Nobody hit any bricks or hit no. any walls. We're not pulling a Deadpool. Deadpool 2 hitting the thing on the mountain. Okay, we're good. All right, so we are now, we've done all the dragging. We're good there. Um, now we're going to actually do the start of top of turn three, Dark Mariners, uh, Deep Wars. So we have just completed part one of a three-part episode of this battle report, the battle for the portals of the Skeletal Coast. Stay tuned for part two, the thrilling middle saga of this epic battle. We'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching.